Uh, Derek, I've seen the show twice, as you know, first time in Los Angeles last year. Penn Jillette said, we have to go to see this show tonight. It's great. That's all I knew it was one word, great. Didn't know what I was getting into. Uh, I've come back in New York to see it. When I send people to see it, I don't mention magic. I say this is a one-man show by a truly great dramatist, and there are some stunning surprises in it. Do, would you prefer that I include the word magic somewhere in when, when I'm selling this show? I suppose it depends on how you're using it. <laughs> uh, um, I don't have a problem with the word magic at all, uh, or the word magician, um, but the show is a, uh, about uh, interpretation and uh, what one calls a thing. So leaving it to you to decide what you want to call it is part of it and why it is vague. It's hard to describe. Um, but uh, um, no, I wouldn't chastise you for not using the word. Well, OK, let's hear your description of what you do every night at this theater and why, why people should come to see in and of itself what you're hoping for for them, for the audience. Uh, yeah, I should have an answer for this by now. Uh, no, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a theatrical experience, uh, that does set some expectations. It is in a theater and I'm on a stage, uh, performing. So, so that part, uh, it's fair to say it's a theatrical experience. And I would say it's a, it's a show that, um, uses monologues and illusions and sleight of hand, um, to have a, a larger conversation about identity. Frank, what are you doing here? How did you come together with Derek to direct this show? Uh, Derek asked me. Uh, we had been friends for a few years. Um, and he asked me, and I, I had no interest whatsoever in doing a magic show. Uh, and You're I not a, a magic geek? I find that most people who hang around this nope. grew up as magic geeks and studied it. Nope, not a magic geek at all. And I don't, when I see a magic trick, I don't want to know what it's, how to do it. I want to be... Uh, uh, taken by the wonder of it. And so I had no interest in directing a show that was magic trick, applause, blackout. Magic trick, I had no interest. But when we both, may I touch you? But we both <laughs> realized um, that we both had the pure hearts and rebellious hearts, and we both understood that we wanted to break the form, then that's when I got on board. What did you have to... I was going to say, what did you have to teach, Derek? Let me just put it in a, more, in a broader way. What did you bring to this for Derek? I guess I brought a guiding hand. I mean, when Derek came to me, he had all the pieces together. He, it was all, and it's all his story. The extraordinary thing is that there's all, all these are true, uh, what he's talking about, all the things are true. So it, he didn't have the sinew to bring them together. Yeah, that's a nice way of saying it. What? The way, the way you said it now. Thank you very much. I mean, you didn't say that nicely <laughs> then. Uh, but well, I think then I said he didn't have the sinew. The idiot didn't have the sinew. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I said that, no, didn't no, I, no. Derek? It, he said, he said I, I, I had to, he, uh, when I asked him to direct, he said, only if I can contribute. Only if I can contribute uh -huh. in a meaningful way. He didn't, had no interest in just directing for directing's sake. And so I've, I... Uh, I flew out to New York and I, I met with him at his house and I walked him through uh, what the show is. And uh, you, you said, the first thing he said is, well, you have like a leg over here and an arm over here, and I think that's an ear over there. You got to make this thing a living, breathing thing. And it was a good way to describe it because I had pieces of what could be one living, breathing show but they weren't connected, and they weren't connected in a way that made it alive. And so, um, uh, it, you know, that is ultimately what he brought to, to, you know, to the show, and it wouldn't be the same. So, Frank, uh, you've now directed everyone from Marlon Brando to Derek. Derek does yes, that, yeah. <laughs> and, and no one else can say that. There's one person who can say I, that. I consider Marlon here and <laughs> yes. Derek here. Uh, and and it, it's... So fascinating for me. The show's fascinating on so many levels. Uh, ha having worked with actors myself, what what I see on I see an actor on stage. That's the way I consume Derek in in the audience as an actor, uh, who then also does these other things that I happen to know 
were not written for him by others, by a scriptwriter. That he conceived right. these things that he's doing, and so I'm seeing I'm seeing an actor uh, creating his own piece, uh, at, at, and it is a complete theatrical piece. Yeah, I I actually don't see an actor; I see a creator. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I told him if I caught him acting, I'd kill him, uh, because it is about authenticity. It is not. Uh, something written by a playwright that he reads. This is his life that he... Can I touch you again? That he... Uh, <laughs> we have a problem. Do we have uh, a, a touch camera? Is the one camera <laughs> devoted just to the touch? <laughs> but, but it's important people don't understand until afterwards I talk to them. my friends. You know, this is, these stories are true. This is not made up. These are all true. So one needn't act that. One does have to dig down deep and remember feelings and remember moments when those things occurred. So it's a different kind of a situation. And that's but, why it's more authentic. Uh, how does it feel to you? If, if someone talks to you about your acting on this stage, what's your reaction to that? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not allowed to, to call it acting because Frank will No, you're not. Right. Uh, so, but can uh, I just pause for a second? Wouldn't you say that to any actor if I catch no. you acting? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, if I catch you acting, yeah, that's absolutely. what the game is. I've done that with actors. Hey, yes. act, you're acting, aren't you? Right. Absolutely. I mean, the, the most common direction I've heard, the most effective direction I've heard from director to actor is uh, a director walks up and just whispers, do nothing, right. and then walks away. Right. I mean, you really, it, 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 it's a misnomer. A director is a misnomer, and an actor is a misnomer. An actor is a misnomer in that it, that person should be being called a beer. Yes, yes. You have yes, to be. Yes. That's it, just beer. Yes. So he's a beer. Not a beer, but a beer. Mm -hmm. That's really what it, what it means. So? Uh, yeah, I, it's, it's, a, it's been a challenge, because I'm, I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm okay with being authentic on stage. I have been, I have, mm -hmm. uh, been able to do that for the longest time, and uh, almost, almost sometimes to my detriment, because I'm not uh, a, a performer performer in terms that I'm not trying to push for anything, uh, which Frank approves of. But where I find it challenging is when I need to create a moment that is um, authentic uh, with a gesture attached to it, or what like a, an actor I guess would call like an intention. Like why are you why are you going over there and picking up that thing? Well, it can, none of it can be um, uh, fictional in the show. So everything everything any what you call an intention I guess if I was an actor uh, is a uh, an authentic moment or a gesture that I need to do in order to continue this experience. And so we've reframed kind of um, the, the way uh, an actor would approach the work to be more like um, uh, artistic statements or gestures uh, or, or moments to make things more legible or clear uh, so that the ideas are communicated. But I never, I, I avoid feeling like an actor because uh, it feels like it's a it's a disingenuous and also it's not fair to, to a lot of the texts because a lot of the texts are very personal they're very um, revealing and so like I talk about my mother in the show at one point mm -hmm. and it feels like if I were to to say those things and if they at any moment felt like lines it would it would be uh, doing a disservice to uh, the text and it just wouldn't be authentic anymore which is sort of the yeah. point exactly and um, it, it's 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 an odd bird here because we, it, it, it's not declarative. It's not presentational. Uh, when he says he doesn't perform, Don't touch me. that I I I was I was just feeling your aura. Um, when I, you know, when when he tells a story, there is no. I see no sweat. I see no performance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just see him telling a story. It's a rare, rare talent to have because it makes the audience, instead of sit back like this, it makes them sit like that. Mm -hmm. And as you know, in that theater, I'm very sensitive to people coughing and moving. You could hear a pin drop mm -hmm. all every night. Um, so that, that is a, a, a talent that he has that is organic and it's great. Uh, one thing about this, is, as I said, it's not declarative or presentational. And for, and for instance, it's not talking to you guys. It's, there's an internal life going on with him. Yes. There's a very strong internal life. You guys will feel it. You will sense that he's struggling in some way. There's something going on through the entire show that's inside him, and you don't know. But it somehow communicates non-verbally in an emotional way. And now that sounds like artsy-fartsy crap. 
I know that, but actually it's true. No, and I'd say the, 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 there's a struggle that's sensed because there, there really is a struggle that's going on. Like, uh, you know, I, we all have a struggle <laughs> in our lives, and, and uh, uh, this show came out of a struggle uh, in my life, uh, and, and not, not a specific struggle, struggle but uh, like anyone, grappling with the notion of who, who am I? Who am I in this world, and, and what am I supposed to do, and how, other, how, how do others see me? And um, the luxury of having um, uh, um, a theme like that that you're tackling is that it never ends. Like, that is, if you allow yourself to struggle with that concept, you can always struggle with it. Um, and it's always present. You're always being someone and you're always being seen by other people. And what does that mean? And what are they seeing right now? And how are they interpreting this? And how am I coming across right now? And, and so whatever, whatever struggle they're seeing on stage is, is a real struggle that I'm dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis because I allow myself to uh, confront uh, and explore this you know, existential crisis of sorts every single day. Well, I've completely run out of questions. Uh, but enough. luckily, luckily, the audience is ready with some questions. Actually, I could go on and on, but we're going to get the audience in here, and someone's ready. Oh. Have you guys seen it? Anybody seen it? I have. OK, cool. I have the mic, so I'll just speak for everyone. Uh, this is a question for Derek. Yes, sir. Uh, you've had several major articles written about you in the show, and there's been a lot of buzz about your career in general for the past few years. Um, do you ever think about what your success is currently looking like? And if so, what are your feelings about how your career is looking right now to lay people and magicians? Um, that's a, a, a good question. I, uh, I'm, the, I think about it in terms of the work and in terms of, of the work I'm allowed to do and the people I get to do that work with. So uh, right now, you know, uh, sitting on the stage with these two gentlemen, um, it is uh, just a reminder of how fortunate I am in terms of the work I get to do um, and the people that I get to talk to and collaborate with. And that for me is really um, uh, the part that I appreciate the, the most or the people that I get to, to surround myself with uh, and, and every day uh, that I get to work with and, and collaborate with. And so that's a constant reminder of how privileged I am um, and, and um, biggest mark of, of any sort of success that I've seen. I've not really thought about it in terms of the public eye because I feel like there's uh, a lot of work to be done and I, I haven't really had a uh, very much of a, a profile, public profile. I haven't really put myself out there that much. Um, I, I've avoided television. I've um, avoided a lot of pr publicity because I just felt it wasn't right for me. Um, so uh, yeah, I haven't really given much thought to to what it means to uh, where, where I'm, where I'm at as far as a career, but um, I'm constantly reminded of how fortunate I am that I get to do the work that I get to do and uh, and feel good about it. It's work that I care about and that I like, and I'm really glad that some people seem to appreciate it because it's not necessarily the most commercial uh, work that's out there. I don't... What's your name? I'm Alex. Alex. I would have introduced you, but I didn't know. That's no okay. Thank you, Lawrence. So O'Donnell. thanks for the question. So who is next? And tell us your name. Join the party. Oh, hi. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, this question is for both Frank and as well as Derek. Uh, specifically for Frank first, do you prefer puppeteering where you can basically be hidden the whole time doing characters like Rover and... Oh, wait. He's a puppeteer? <laughs> oh. Oh. That too. Or do you prefer directing or directing a live situation like this? And specifically, how difficult is it to direct somebody you're friendly with and how hard is it to be directed by somebody that you know is a friend? Well, I love directing. I mean, the puppeteer, I haven't performed for about 10 years. Uh, my characters are now done by other people. I just, can't, I, just, I just can't go off and do a movie for a year and say, no, you can't do my characters. I have to do them in a year. It's not fair. So other people, people I know are doing it. So, as far as the puppeteering goes, I've done it for 35, 40 years, and I, uh, I love doing it, but just not that much anymore. What I love is directing, and I've always wanted to be a theater director, and it's happened that I kept on doing movies, and I didn't screw up, and they kept on asking me. Uh, so I'm, you know, this is the third theater production I've directed, and I, I'm thrilled. Um, as far as working with Derek, I think, I think I don't know, how, I don't think it has much to do with friendship or not. I think it has to do with, a. Uh, do we have a common core? Do we have a core friend or not that is ready for exploration, for taking chances, for making mistakes, for going down blind alleys? You know, it's that kind of 
relationship that I think is important, you know. And who's next? Hi, uh, uh, I'm Jawad, and I was, uh, I was wondering, like, do you, I'm a big fan of your films, and oh, I was thank wondering, you. Uh, do you see any similarities in uh, filmmaking and, or even puppeteering uh, with magic, where you're creating an illusion of something created on film or stage, and, and uh, do, you, do you feel like um, your experience directing movies has, a, a, was that similar to directing a, a stage or theater show? Yeah, I, I, I um, as far as a, a stage and film, stage is a different toolbox. And I've been asked to direct larger things, and I, I feel too responsible, so I've been directing more off-Broadway. I did something in London and everything. So I, 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 as a director of film, I've done big films. I, I'll take a step-by-step -step in theater, to, to be fair to people. Uh, but thank you for the, the words. Uh, uh, as far as magic and, and puppeteering and all that, it, you know, it, I know it sounds, uh, I don't know, it sounds, I don't know what it is, so the adjective, but it, it all gets down to honesty. It's the same thing as honesty and everything. Honesty not of this world, but honesty in the world that one is creating. Um, and that's pretty much what it is. That's all it is. Anybody else? Is there another one? Okay. Uh, we're going to wrap it up in a second. Frank, I just want to ask you one question about acting, because you've done acting in Star Wars where you you only have your voice. Why are you here? Uh, <laughs> you can go now. I go where they tell me to. I just go where they tell me. Uh, you you only have your voice. That's all we. That's all we in the audience get. What do you What do you learn about acting when you you are your performance is if in effect restricted to your voice? It's not. Oh, okay. No, I do the whole thing. I mean, uh, you ask people how is Yoda done? How is it done? I don't do the voice only. The voice is ten percent of it. The rest of it is the character, the physical character. So I do that with uh, two other people. So it's a very physical thing, and um, as far as, you know, I don't have any idea why my characters live and breathe the way they do. I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, but it's not because of voice, it's not because of physical, it's some sort of bizarre ability that I shouldn't be thanked for, it's just because it, it's there, I have no idea, you know. Can I say one thing about, about this show here, though? Only one thing. Okay. okay. <laughs> one thing that really is important to me, and it comes from Derek completely. I keep on touching you. Uh, one thing that comes from Derek completely is the, 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 the theme of duality of identity, and, and, and more than duality. You know, in my opinion, how we perceive each other is very limiting. You know, you're Lawrence, you're a brilliant broadcaster. That's it. A political commentator, that's it. You're a magician, theater artist, I'm a puppeteer director, that's it. Okay, I know who you are, I'm comfortable. What? What, you do more? What, you mean you do something else too, besides broadcast? And I can't handle that. So this show is about saying, yeah, we do more. Every human being does more, and is allowed to do more. And that kind of exploration of identity is what really, is, it really strikes me, and one of the main reasons I'm doing this show is to, to support the fact that we are more than one thing. Derek, I just want to close by asking you the question that you're going to be asked for the rest of your life mm. in interviews. Uh, what was it like to work with Frank Oz? Uh, that, that's a good question to be asked. Uh, uh, and uh, it, uh, it was one of the most, was, it's over now. It's over, it's over. We're, pre we're uh, pretending now, no. 50 years, it's 50 years in the future, you're 85, I'm you've, dead. you've yeah. come down to do yeah. another episode of Build, and the question's uh, gonna, the first question's you gonna have, be. Yeah, that fool was, me right by your bed. It, uh, <laughs> Working with Frank was one of the most nourishing experiences of my life, uh, artistically, uh, personally, uh, and uh, just uh, it's, it's made me a better person, better artist. And because I've, you know, I've never, I've, I've never trusted anyone professionally like I've trusted Frank ever in any context. And and uh, what you can create when you trust someone that much, and when you're willing to go to the places that they ask you to go or dare you to go, you can find incredible things. And, and Frank is the one who taught me that. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the most fun I've had in front of cameras in as long as I can remember. Uh, <laughs> the show is in and of itself. It's over here on 15th Street for the rest of the year.
Yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll be open through the rest of the year, at least through uh, December 30th now. Yeah, and this man is a unique, unique individual. I'm not saying performer, individual. Yeah. Thank and you. I, and I don't know how the show ends, because this is not my show, and there's no one well, in my ear. Oh, that, clapping is a good way to end it. Oh, yeah. 